And when it in this video render video, I'm gonna take a look at some more tips for Lumion 2024. Now, because my videos normally tend to be very, very long, I'm gonna do this in 10 tips in 10 minutes. Go ahead and get into it. Tip number one, Lumion Live Sync. If you're new to Lumion, you might not realize that for a lot of different softwares, there is a live sync feature. Now, we'll primarily be looking at this from the point of view of SketchUp. So if we go back to SketchUp real quick, you can see we've got the Lumion Live Sync right here. Now, this is actually really easy to work with. You just have to go to the extension warehouse, search for Lumion, and install directly from there. Other than that, you don't have to do anything. The benefit of working with a live sync is, if we take a look at our model here, any changes that we make are going to be immediately updated to you in Lumion. And you can see, there we go. There's the wall we just pulled out. The Lumion Live Sync, it takes a bit of time to connect, but once it is connected, you see your SketchUp changes or the changes in your respective software incredibly quickly updated in Lumion. So yeah, don't bother with just file, save as, and open. Just use the Live Sync. You can also even match the cameras as well. Although generally I found performance is a little better if you turn off camera synchronization. If you're working with the traditional raster engine in Lumion and you want to improve the quality of your reflections, there are a couple of things we can do here. You'll notice that these reflections over here are kind of stretching a little bit too far off into the distance. I want to narrow that down a little bit so we can go to back to the build mode, go place, and we can drop in a reflection control sphere. And this will put basically planar reflections in our scene. And I'll just pop this right there. And now when we zoom in and we go to photo mode and we'll take a look at this here, you can see the reflections are of a much higher quality and they're also going to be focused in the room, basically the area that you want the reflections to be in and not go too far out of that. It's a small little thing and most new users don't realize about reflection spheres within Lumion. The next tip pertains to image overlays in Lumion. If we go to FX, we can go all the way to Tools and Utilities, and you'll have an option here for Image Overlay. Now, this can be really useful. You can see we've added the VIA Render logo. You can see it's sitting right here. You've got options for placing your image in the different corners, and we can adjust the actual scale. So you can get your watermark, for example, straight on your renders, and you can also adjust the opacity. And what's really cool is the Lumion Collective has made a pack that you can use. This is available from their website, and it actually links out directly to their Gumroad station, where you can actually purchase these overlays for free, which is really, really cool. Big thank you to the Lumion Collective. Next tip we want to mention is moving lights to specific layers. In Lumion, you can actually hold down the control key, drag a selection over all of your lights, and then we can actually place them on specific layers. So you can see right up here, it says current layer, layer one. Let's go ahead and put that to layer five. Now, what's really cool is when we actually go to render our shots, you can see that we can add the FX and we can put layer visibility on, it's under utilities. And now what we can do is click on layer visibility, and here is our render with our lights. You can see the glow going on and we can toggle off our lights. And again, just update the preview. And you can see now the lights are actually off in this scene. This is a really cool way to be able to work with your lights both on and in the scene and toggle them off as need be. I think it's really, really cool to be able to put things on layers and lights work really well when you put them on a layer in Lumion. And you can always toggle that layer back on when it's time to actually render. By default, your lights do not appear in the Lumion build viewport. Now, strictly speaking, if we hit F8 on the keyboard, we should be able to see our lights. But you'll notice that we can't. And the reason for this is because there's too much ambient light in the scene. So just go to the weather tab. And we're going to actually drop the sun height here. You could also just drop the sun brightness as well if you want. But sometimes it's a little bit easier just turn this into a little bit of a darker scene. 
and then hit F8 on your keyboard and now you'll see you're actually able to visualize the effect of your lights in the build mode. So here we've got a mixture of three different grass objects. And you can see if we want to actually select all of these, we can always hold down control and drag the selection over them and then hold down alt to duplicate. But that can get a little bit messy and time consuming. An easier way to go about doing this is to just add these to a group. So I'm going to hold down control, left click and drag the selection. And up here on the right, you can see we've got the option to add current selection to group. And there we go. Now, whenever we just move these around, you can see that they will stay together as a group. And it's an easy way to work with really dense areas of detailed foliage. Now, what's also really cool about this is you can actually save these groups. And you can see, you can just enter a group name, category folder, just leave as main default. And when that's done, we can now go back to place. And over here on the bottom left, you'll see we've got groups. And I'm just going to click on this. And now in any scene that I actually work with, there we go. So basically make groups, make selections, make groups, save them. And now they'll be available in any of your Lumion scenes. That's pretty cool. If you've made it to this point in the video, thank you so much for watching. Really, really, really do appreciate it. And thank you for all those who take the time to comment, uh, like, and the, you know, sort of group of you who've sort of, uh, subscribed. Uh, thank you so much. Next tip we want to talk about is custom IES light profiles in Lumion. The spotlights use IES light profiles. What you might not know is you can actually change these out. You're not limited to the default ones. So you can see we've got lamp 19, very thin IES light profile, but right here we've got the ability to browse and load up our own custom. So this is a thin, narrow one. I'm going to go browse, load this one up, and you can see now we've actually got a much wider IES light. And because IES light files are available online, you can find different lighting setups that will work and give you a different profile. Now, again, I want to mention that this selection of IES light profiles actually comes again from the Lumion Collective, and they have made a whole bunch of IES light profiles available to you for free. So thank you again to the Lumion Collective. There you go. Change out your IES light profile for a different look to your lights. Next tip, once you've got a light in your scene actually placed, you can target it. Now, by default, you could spend a lot of time rotating lights around trying to get the effect that you're going for. However, if we go up here to the top right, we can see we've got the option for target lights. I can now click on that and allows this allows me to basically point my lights in the direction that I particularly want them to go. This is extremely useful for setting up lights, particularly in landscape renders when you want lights, particularly ground lights pointing up at trees, but if you're not getting the look you want. You can also use this target light effect to effectively point lights for specific scenes. For example, if you're doing a theater or stage lighting production and you want to see how it'll look, use the target light button. Very, very useful to get the light to go where you need it to be. If you've downloaded a material from another resource, maybe Polygon or iMesh or somewhere like that, and you notice that it actually comes with a gloss map, and you're thinking, well, the gloss map, for example, on this concrete floor has been plugged into the roughness slider because they're pretty comparable maps, but you'll notice it is not displaying correctly. Well, don't worry. In Lumion, all we have to do is go up to the roughness, click on the menu, and inverse the map. Now you can see this rough concrete material is displaying correctly. And this is because a gloss map and a roughness map are the same thing, they're just inverse. And so if you find yourself using a gloss map, feel free to load it up into the roughness slider and just hit the inverse button within Lumion. Tip number two, easy replacing of objects. Say your scene has got a nice tree like this one here, but you actually want to replace it with an exact other tree in the exact same location. Yes, you could easily delete it and just, you know, place a new tree in. But you can also go up to the top right here, show advanced options, 
and hit the replace selection button. I'm going to hit that and you can see I've got options for different trees and you can replace this with anything here in the foliage tab. And I'm going to do this Austrian pine and click on that and there we go. Please note you will have to confirm your choice on the bottom right. This is an incredibly easy way to actually replace trees and foliage in your scene with different models.